Hi Joe, thank you so much for coming on Automating the Chain. I'm so very grateful and a lot of the listeners out there are very excited to hear about your AR technology. So uh, just to briefly introduce you, you've got over 20 years of experience in the uh, AR and um, I would say 3D modeling space with your career in the US military, but also in the industrial space. Can you just give us a bit more context in how you ended up starting your company and really what got you to build for the manufacturing space? Yeah, so essentially we started ARIA to uh, work with different military contractors and, and uh, special forces teams uh, where they had some of the same use cases where um, we're seeing an enterprise where they had employees that needed to walk up to a piece of equipment, be able to understand how to operate it, how to um, better interact with it from a training aspect, uh, virtually or uh, within uh, their remote environments. So uh, essentially, you know, we built custom applications for them that were centered around using augmented reality to deliver work instructions, manuals, or, or how to operate those machinery, um, which was great for the end customers as far as um, how they interact with it, but time consuming on our end to build the content, build those applications. Uh, and they really only served those one-off solutions uh, and, and weren't scalable. So from that, we gained a lot of value in what AR could bring to drive better experiences with end users. And then we went to build a platform to take ourselves out of loop and let then customers who are actually the subject matter experts on that piece of machinery, build the content, build those work instructions uh, themselves, which traditionally is not easy for you know, a client to build an AR experience. Um, even today, it's, it's not widespread um, that these clients um, have experienced AR or built experiences themselves. For someone who has never heard of AR, can you explain what that means and what your device does? Do you hold it? Is it a tablet? Is it a phone? How do you map out the environment? You know, who sees the environment? What does it do to help? Can you just paint that picture for us just so that anyone listening or watching can fully understand what your technology, your, the capabilities? Yeah, so I think a lot of people have started experiencing augmented reality um, with consumer applications. So the IKEA application uh, is a good example where through augmented reality, they're able to project virtual content within uh, people's environments through the camera feed. And you're able to interact with virtual um, furniture, virtual products uh, as it exists in your world. Um, that drives a lot of value being able to actually experience something and virtually project something into your environment one-to-one um, -one scale. Uh, so that way the end users can experience those objects as if they were part of their own world. Uh, we take that same concept and try to apply it to an industrial workforce. So imagine, you know, I'm a worker, I walk into an environment, I might not understand how to operate that piece of machinery. Uh, I can use my phone to interpret what it's looking at, uh, identify the piece of equipment, and then overlay instructions on what operations or what buttons to press. And those actuations or uh, content is burdened onto the objects themselves, um, which makes it a lot easier to understand as an end user the context of what buttons to press, what actions to take. Um, it takes out the kind of mental gymnastics of trying to interpret you know, a 2D drawing or, or 3D video um, when it's actually projected on the physical objects one-to-one uh, -one scale. So it really augmented reality is, is, is about bringing the best of the virtual world into the real world and projecting that virtual content onto the actual objects. So that way the end user has no guesswork in what actions to take or what to do next within their process or procedures. What I found 
so fascinating, particularly in the COVID, um, I would say, era. I can completely imagine the application of AR when you have a lot of folks with experience uh, who suddenly could be high, high risk, have to stay at home. And then suddenly the work, younger workforce who have, let's say, not as much experience are suddenly have to, having to operate machines or certain, I would say, fulfill some orders that they have no idea of how to do. It's, it's that the scenarios, um, uh, are these the scenarios you're seeing right now? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of the issues that we've seen in manufacturing uh, environments is you have an older workforce that knows how to operate piece of machinery, um, but they might be in age groups that are high risk for COVID. So a lot of them, you know, either have to stay home or, or, or we're very, you know, fearful of taking on risk uh, of interacting with younger uh, generations or younger workers within these environments. So a lot of them have had to adopt, you know, tools like Zoom or, or other web or mobile technologies to communicate more effectively. But those tools weren't really designed or built to work within a manufacturing environment to communicate work instructions or how to operate machinery. So we really centered around building applications to help workers easily communicate their work instructions and, and build that content within our platform. What is fascinating about the space is that, uh, and the space you're in is, there seems to be quite a lot of uh, demand to transfer this knowledge. So let's talk about your customers. Uh, firstly, who are your customers? How are you serving them? And uh, what does it look like in, what are the challenges they're facing? What does it look like for them? And how are you actually dealing with it? Yeah, so you know, we have uh, developed the RDO platform to help bridge uh, communication and provide spatial context to that, uh, and also help digitize work instructions. Um, and we kind of help future-proof that by adding that AR layer, which allows that spatial context to be added to your work documentation. Right now, our, our major verticals have been manufacturing, energy utilities, and defense. Uh, and they all kind of have the same end use case. Mm -hmm. I have new workers, you know, that work in these complex environments. I have complex machinery that will have some level of, of maintenance or, or downtime associated with that piece of equipment. How can I best provide work instructions or documentation or knowledge sharing across my organization uh, to effectively reduce the downtime, increase performance, better provide training to younger millennials um, that are joining these work environments that are used to using phones and tablets within uh, their daily or personal lives. So we really help kind of digitize work instructions and then future-proof them with the spatial context and the AR that will one day allow a wearable or some other peripheral that um, will be added onto a phone or tablet to have a seamless, handless experience in the future. And your customers, uh, you have been serving some very large cli uh, clients so far. Can you tell us, um, you, you don't have to mention names, what you did for them, what was you know, what was the benefit that uh, they saw and, you know, uh, potentially return on investment for them? Yeah, so a lot of our clients will uh, adapt our platform to help digitize their work instructions. So they'll look at kind of going after a low hanging fruit. So they might have one piece of equipment that has high uh, demand as far as maintenance or has a high risk of uh, downtime that produces large, you know, uh, issues with production. And I, a lot of our clients, what they'll do is they'll build out those solutions themselves. Mm -hmm. So they'll use our uh, web dashboard to create the process procedures. They'll create checklists, courses around that content. And they 
then use the mobile applications to deploy that content to the workers. Uh, and then through uh, using the platform, they are able to iterate on the process procedures. They're able to add 3D models, video content, other media components that enriches those experiences and view the analytics to better be build those feedback loops mm -hmm. to enhance the processes. So a lot of our clients have never really been able to um, build AR, but through our platform, uh, we've tried to make it kind of four things, simple, secure, scalable, and about sharing. Uh, and those four things combined allows individuals to easily walk up to with their phone or tablet, start building that content, and then be able to transfer those work instructions to anybody within their organization or the team uh, very effectively and easily using phones or tablets that they already have in their pockets. What I, I wanted to ask you is, I the industrial space for, let's say, 10 plus years has been investing heavily into automating, uh, particularly the large enterprises. Are you serving the very large enterprises are, or are you serving the middle, um, I would say, the, the companies that are sitting in the middle, or are you serving the smaller companies? Uh, who are you going after and how are you going to tier your product so that you can serve as many people as possible? Yeah, so I, this year, in the last couple of years, we've been servicing uh, larger enterprises. Um, a lot of them, you know, they've tested AR uh, or used other platforms um, with wearables and other components. Um, and they've liked or adopted the ARIO platform faster. Uh, because it's simple to use and it's using phones and tablets that their workforce already has. Um, and those workplaces, you know, they've really centered around trying to find areas within their manufacturing lines that have high downtime. Mm -hmm. So if I have a machine that, you know, on average 1000 to potentially up to $22,000 a minute could be lost if that machine's not producing, uh, whatever piece of uh, product that's meant to. Um, those issues, you know, have been compounded because of COVID mm -hmm. that downtime has been increasing within these environments because some of those individuals or um, the workforce that knows how to operate that can't either fly to those locations or it's just harder to communicate with COVID, you know, being, you know, an issue within these environments. So, We've really centered around that approach as far as helping large enterprises adopt and expand use cases of AR beyond just one-off pilots. Um, but as we move forward with the platform, we're adopting more of a zero touch and, and making it more user-friendly. Again, you know, having a platform on a mobile phone or tablet today means that they don't have to adopt any new technologies or any new uh, hardware. They can use the technologies that a lot of these companies traditionally have and, and um, use today. Absolutely. So let's just go. Um, let's just step back for a moment. And if you're if if you are a customer of yours right now, and um, one of your let's say your large enterprises, how do they how do they find you right now? What is the what is the customer journey? Just so that if anyone is listening right now and saying, "Hey, I want to be working with Aero," how do I do this? Do they, you know, approach you? What is it like? Uh, how do you want them to approach you? What is it the cycle and the process? Yeah, right now a lot of our kind of touch points has been uh, on our end. You know, we've done some ad campaigns, we've done some outreach. On, you know, a lot of uh, our traction has been us reaching out to manufacturers or going to uh, manufacturing events and kind of showing off our technology. Um, and really then it becomes the point of getting it in the hands of the users so they can understand what our technology can bring um, and how easy it is to adapt or, or create the content. Um, a lot of our competitors and a lot of uh, the, the AR industry is, is really 
difficult software to or hardware dependent. So I have to make a major investment in some type of new hardware, or I'll have a platform that might not necessarily, you know, be easy to create or author content. Uh, and for us, we really try to focus on something where I can just pick it up, you know, with little training, I, I can build content, I can build work instructions, I can do all that without any development support. Um, and ultimately, you can have the end user that is knowledgeable about piece of equipment, author and publish and distribute that. Um, and you look at a lot of these work environments, that's not necessarily the case. You're like they're using Oracle, Siemens, Maximo, other things that traditionally an IT or a development team has to build those work instructions or that flow out. Um, and that might work great, but you start losing that effect of having the end user that knows how to operate that and, you know, day in, day out, be able to easily author that content. And beyond that, they're not easily able to add media or 3D content or more advanced instruction mediums that make those work instructions a lot more powerful. So we really center around building a platform to enable that expert to easily author, distribute, create that content, uh, and then deliver that to the end users. Um, and a lot of our customer traction today has just been, you know, companies looking for an augmented reality solution. They'll either come to our website or show them a demo at the booth, and then they'll try it, understand it, and understand this whole new world of, you know what, I've built instructions before, I've built this, but I've never had that spatial component. I've never been able to relay that piece of, you know, instructions to someplace physically in the world. Uh, and that's really what we do at REO is, is help bridge that spatial component. So that way, when I walk into a room with a hundred pieces of equipment, I can leverage my phone to understand my environment mm -hmm. and then connect using that technology, those work instructions to the actual piece of equipment when and where it's needed most. Wow. This is, you know, I can imagine uh, you have one scenario where everything is working well and then another scenario where it's not working so well and you being able to go back in time and almost uh, go back to the issue and try to go back to the actual problem at hand uh, must be fascinating in a, a large plant or... But um, let's... Uh, let's well, my final question to you, uh, given the the time is what is most exciting to you moving forward we've had this incredibly challenging year a lot has been happening for uh, all the companies everyone's been impacted and uh, from and, you know, everyone across the supply chain uh, to everyone we know i'm sure uh, but what is exciting about 2021 to you about the industry about your company yeah, so, I, you know, I think this year was a very challenging year for a lot of enterprises and a lot of manufacturing companies because uh, they had to deal with issues that they couldn't plan or, or be, you know, prepared for. So with that, you know, we really focus as a company building solutions that could help solve these spatial problems and do that remotely. Um, and you look at, you know, where a lot of these companies were thinking as far as digitalization, you know, it's really advanced this mindset or this need for video communication tools, the need for digitalization. Uh, we think, you know, up to five years more, you know, uh, ahead of where it could have been, you know, pre COVID. Mm -hmm. So we see this as a, a lot of companies will adopt new technologies and not only this will be part of how they, operate during these hard times mm -hmm. but how they operate potentially you know for the rest of you know their you know operations moving forward so uh I, I think for us it's it's really allowing companies to experience ar for the first time see the value understand the roi and understand the impacts 
that this new technology will have within their industry. Uh, and COVID has just been one of the you know, issues that's helped drive them to, to want to try new technologies. I think once they've tried it and understand the value proposition around being able to communicate with this new medium, um, the, for everybody that we've looked at, they see this as the future and they're excited to see where this goes. Even though right now it's heavily focused on um, phones and tablets uh, with our users, we understand as a company that advancements and wearables and other things are on the horizon, uh, even though they're not viable today. They I will be. my Google Glass, but you know, I was going to wear it. <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, yeah, of course. Uh, the wearables. Yeah, it, it's great because wearables, you know, uh, have so much potential in the future. Um, and we're excited that, you know, our platform will help companies embrace that faster whenever it's ready. So we're helping you drive that spatial context with the mobile phones and tablets. And we see what will happen is that your phones and tablets will be the way you interact or connect those wearables to that interface in the future. But in the meantime, you can start building all that spatial context. You can start building those experiences now, knowing that that hands-free interface is, you know, a year to two years out uh, to the end user. Well, my key takeaways are, look, AR is actually useful. It is better for safety, so you, those who are potentially at high risk can stay at home, and you can transfer knowledge to the younger generation and prevent um, some, I would say, major disastrous events. So th this is pretty, um, I would say, pretty impactful stuff. So really, thank you so much, Joe, for your time today, and I'm really grateful and, and uh, for the listeners out there. Thank you so much for tuning in.